trees that we use, we've developed uh, over a lot of years. And believe me, I've really worked hard in developing the trees. Started out years ago with a fellow that's passed away and been gone for quite a few years. And he came up with what we call the JT Cutter, a John Hoyt, uh, a Bob Loomis, and some other things. Trees that, Butch Gardell, the first president of the NRHA, we made a lot of saddles for him. Uh, so we, we found a way to make a saddle. My brother was riding roper saddles back then, you know, that, that's what there was. And so in this age of specialization, you now have cutting saddles, brow racing saddles, Western Pleasure saddles, uh, uh, ranch saddles, uh, of course, roping saddles, and all that sort of thing. But now, now you see you've got reining saddles. Whole idea is to uh, make it as comfortable for the horse as possible and then try to make it as comfortable for the person as possible. Uh, the trees, uh, there's, there's several component parts in the tree. Of course, the swell and the horn, and then the bars left and right, and the cannel. And the way those things are assembled make an awful lot of difference on how it fits on the horse. People talk about a quarter horse spread. There's no such thing as a quarter horse spread. You can call it that if you want to, but it's a, it's a certain amount of, uh, of, of spread from outside the bar, outside the bar in the front and a certain amount of, uh, of uh, uh, inches between the bars the way they attach up underneath the swell cover, or the swell, I'm sorry. And the cannel can be uh, flat, it can be round, it can be wide, it can be uh, narrow, it can be all kinds of things. What we've tried to do is to take all of those components and figure out how best to make them work on a rainer. And one of the first and most, most uh, uh, successful things we ever did was to figure out how to make a shoulders free tree. And, and, and I worked with uh, a couple of different tree makers to get that done. And it's been extremely successful as, uh, as rainers became quite a bit beefier up on top. You have a lot of tendencies, you'll see cutting horses that aren't that, that wide in the front end, you know. Uh, so anyway, working cow horses and cutters are a little different kind of horse than a rainer, although they cross over quite nicely. But uh, that's pretty much it. The trees are special. They, they, we've worked on them a long time. We kind of know how they work. And uh, once again, one thing that we do, and it, it's really tough, it's easy to make one tree for one horse. It may not work on any other horses, but it'll work on that one particular horse. And we do that. And we, we have a way to do that to make sure that it fits with a casting system we've got. But nine times out of ten, people are going to ride several different horses with the same saddle. If they do, what you have to do is you have to find something that splits a difference, that makes it tolerable for those kind, for as many horses as possible. When we went to, up to a stable, Sterling Stables, I think we took a couple of trees with uh, Jonathan Gutierrez, who was really kind to help us with this. And we set those trees on all different kinds of horses that they had up there. And I mean all kinds of backs. And we filmed them, and we got uh, we talked to Sylvain Gutierrez about it, uh, and, and and we discussed it from top to bottom. And the, and the interesting part about it is, it fit most of the, those trees fit most of the horses. One or two they didn't, but most of the horses they fit, which is a very important line. Of